You say banana, I say banana. G'day, I'm Mark from Self Sufficient Me and in this video I'm going to give you my five top tips on how to grow a ton of bananas. Let's get into it. Once you taste a banana that has been allowed to fully sweeten and draw those nutrients, goodness and sugars from the plant, you will never forget that experience. Tip number one, planting. Bananas grow best in warmer climates, but some people do grow them in cold climates, in heated greenhouses, or even in containers so that they can be moved indoors during winter. For a backyard banana grower, I think the best way to start them is from sucker growth or small plants purchased from a reliable retailer. These plants behind me, except for the small one there, were all started from just two plants I found growing off the side of the roadway in our local area. Technically, it's a bit naughty of me to take them due to the risk of introducing diseased bananas onto our property, such as bunchy top, but a quick inspection of the plants showed no signs of ill health. So I took them and they turned out to be the best tasting bananas we've ever grown. For free. I purchased this ladyfinger here, only recently they call it cool bananas, from our local nursery. So I'm keen to see how that grows compared to these other ladyfingers that I got for nothing. There are lots of fun and different varieties of bananas to explore, such as dwarf for containers or small backyards, or even different coloured varieties if you want to seek them out. But for a backyarder, it's hard to go past the everyday ladyfinger. They're deliciously sweet and easy to grow. Generally, commercial banana growers will spread their trees out in rows a few metres apart. This makes sure they don't rob each other of nutrients and water. It also makes it easier to manage from a farming perspective. However, I like to grow our bananas in groups because it saves space, is easier for me to manage, and I just reckon a bunch of banana plants looks great in the backyard. Banana plants produce suckers, which are clones from the original plant grown from its rhizome or root system. These suckers can be dug away from the mother plant to be regrown elsewhere. Plant them in good fertile free draining soil because even though bananas love lots of water, they will easily rot and die in boggy ground. Dig a hole and plant them just like any other fruit tree and pretty soon you'll not only have bananas but you'll also have new plants popping up to replace the old ones. Hey did you know that bananas are a distant relative of ginger? It's true. Don't forget to check out my how to grow a ton of ginger video. Tip number two, growing. The variety of banana that you grow will often determine the size of the bunches. And I've seen some massive backyard banana bunches. But no matter what variety you have, ensuring the plants are looked after will also help to grow better bunches with nice fat fruit. Make sure the plants are getting regular water and are not subjected to long dry spells. Although banana plants will survive in dry conditions, they won't fruit very well at all. Banana plants benefit from extra feeds with organic fertilizers such as chicken pellet manure or organic blood and bone mixes. Natural manures from your own animals are also great to use. Because we grow our bananas in clumps, I like to direct compost kitchen scraps into the centre of the plants. Yeah, I know this method might not be suitable for everyone, particularly if your plants are near the home, because sticking compost in the centre of the plants can get a little stinky. But if the plants are away from the house, like ours, this is a really good method of getting extra feed into them. I recommend feeding banana plants several times during the life of the plant and during the main growing season. I don't feed the plants through our subtropical winter. For example, 
If using a typical commercial organic fertilizer such as chicken manure pellets, I would throw three or four handfuls around the base of the tree every two to three months in spring, summer and autumn. Mulching. Yes, here we go again. You know I love mulch, but mulching around the banana plants is really important and very good for them, especially when first starting bananas off. Luckily, banana plants tend to provide their own mulch as it grows. The dead leaves can be removed and layered around the base of the plant to help retain moisture, suppress weeds and provide extra nutrients. Tip number three, protecting. Bananas are particularly attractive to wildlife. I wonder why. Bats, birds, possums, rats will all attack bunches of bananas as soon as they are showing signs of ripening. Sometimes animals will try bananas even when they're green, leading to ruined fruit that just rots on the tree or falls off onto the ground. It's enough to drive you, dare I say it, nuts bananas. We bag our bunches to prevent the animals getting them. Even when fully ripe and falling off the hands, our bananas are safe. I now attach a galvanized mesh to the base of our banana bags, and this stops the clever fruit bats from climbing up inside the bag and getting to the fruit. There are lots of pests and diseases that can affect banana plants and the fruit. So monitor the plants, and if you see something unusual, such as sudden dieback, then investigate and deal with it early. Surprisingly, the dreaded fruit fly doesn't touch our bananas, despite being a major problem in our area for other fruits. And I haven't seen any sign of pest or disease common in commercial plantations. I think the reason for that is the small footprint of backyard banana growing doesn't allow for big populations of nasties to generate and grow. Tip number four, harvesting. You're looking at about 12 months, give or take a few months either side, for a banana tree to finish growing and producing its fruit. After a few years of allowing suckers to turn into new plants, it's possible to have a staggered growth of bananas at different stages and a regular supply of fruit. Just like most fruits, the longer they are left on the tree to ripen, the better. During the final stage of ripening, the raised vertical lines running along the length of the fruit smooth out and the fruit swells. And once this happens, you can effectively harvest from then on. There's a popular myth going around online that I've read a few times, people saying that bananas left to ripen on the tree fully aren't as sweet and they lack a good texture. The only reason I can think of why this would be promulgated is as a misinformation to justify the artificial ripening of supermarket bananas. Regardless, I can categorically say that bananas left to ripen on the tree or close to it are definitely better than anything picked really early. Having said that, there might be reasons why backyard bananas are harvested before they are fully ripe, such as storm damage or pests targeting the fruit. Therefore, it's inevitable that some hands of bananas might be at various stages of ripening when you do harvest the bunch anyway. So just eat the ripest first, and then the rest can be left to ripen on the kitchen bench. Personally, I don't go through the trouble of harvesting a hand at a time off the plant. I remove the full bunch once I see them ripening, and sometimes I forget altogether until they're falling literally off the stalk. Oops. Banana plants only produce one crop. So once the bunch is harvested, I chop and drop the plant to be used as mulch for the new developing plants. Tip number five, using the glut. A glut of bananas or too many bananas is never a terrible thing. It can only ever be a wonderful problem to have. Firstly, it means success as a backyard banana grower and growing your own food is always special. Secondly, it's a good excuse to overeat on one of the most famous, nutritious and delicious fruits known to man. And thirdly, it's an opportunity to use your glut of produce in many ways. Try freezing to use later for smoothies, to make fruit ice cream or sorbets, or in baking. Dehydrate them into banana chips and dust them with cinnamon for extra flavor. 
make them into fruit leather rolls. How would you use a glut of bananas? Write your suggestions and tips in the comments section below so that we can all have a good read and learn from it. And that's it. Those were my five top tips on growing a ton of bananas. Planting, growing, protecting, harvesting, and using the glut. Practice these things and you'll be growing a ton of cool bananas just like I can. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and give us a big fat ladyfingers thumbs up. I'm also on Patreon if you'd like to support me there. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye for now. Oh, what the heck. I might as well eat this. Hmm. What a way to finish a video.